Hi folks, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Payal and I am a traveler who also loves to meet people. And I think a blend of both is where this concept of melting pot has come about. In my melting pot series, I will be talking to lots of inspiring people from different parts of the world and also from different cultures whom I meet during all my travels. The common factor between these folks will be the desire to follow their passion and make it a way of life. So step into this melting pot and enjoy the chat. Hi listeners, I'm back with another episode of Melting Pot, a series of conversations with some extraordinary people and I think you've gathered that by now if you've been listening to my previous episodes. In today's episode, I'm in conversation with renowned visual artist from India, Sunil Padwal, who incidentally is also one of my personal favorites. So can you imagine my excitement at being able to chat with him and have him tell you my listeners a little bit about his journey. So thank you so much for being a part of Melting Pot and I'm really really happy to be talking to you today. So as I mentioned, I always like my guests to and I don't refer to these conversations as interviews at all. They are like chat and so I, you know, so here I am chatting with you really. <laughs> you know, tell me a little bit about your journey yeah thanks thanks for having me first of all and thanks for such kind words yeah and probably your listeners would know that uh, you have been collecting art for many years you are you yourself have been like an ardent fan of art and uh, you know a lot about indian art and uh, i mean i just want our listeners to know that <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it's such a great way to connect with you after so long uh, and so i'm really happy and thrilled about this uh, and this is a good medium in a way Thank you thank you yes i totally agree and i also need to add here that i am a huge collector of sunil padwal art as well <laughs> so, thank you thank you so much okay so uh, well where to begin you know i mean uh, it's like uh, i started working i mean i passed out in 1989 and so many years i've been working in art field i uh, i just give my brief background so i grew up in an extremely humble lower middle class locality in south mumbai uh, a place called kumbar wada probably lots of people wouldn't know that and uh, while i hated the experience in school i, I hated the schooling and the typical uh, you know the typical school where i get scolded by teacher got beaten by teachers i realized that i enjoyed drawing more than anything else during that time uh, i used to make chalk drawings on the walls in the chal and i remember on my art teacher's insistence i visited jj school of arts and luckily i got admission in fine art program and once there uh, i was actually over cloud 9 you know for, for a person who had like zero exposure of art jj jj was like a mecca for me and you know i was suddenly exposed to a new world where i got all the freedom i wanted and unfortunately because of financial pressure i had to switch from fine art to applied art uh, though i learned all the basics of art in uh, jj in both fine art and uh, in applied art both the art colleges i graduated in 1989 and after that i worked in advertising for about 5 years or so and so i soon realized that's not my cup of tea but i had no option but to work in advertising just to earn money and in 1994 thanks to rpg foundation i got my first break as i was able to exhibit my painting and that was actually a funny story i got a call when i was working in times of india and i got a call saying mr harsh goenka who is like a, a big art collector and art connoisseur in bombay he wanted to speak to me and i said who is this person so i remember adil jessa wala uh, a poet there who used to uh, write for times he said sunil should go and visit this person is like uh, really big in art i said okay it's a, in in a couple of days i went and saw him he said are you an artist i said no i mean i want to become one but is uh, so he said the all your work which has been published in press most of the illustrations and graphic design they all look like art i said yeah i wanted to follow but unfortunately i couldn't do it so he said yeah, he offered me a show and that's really sweet of him and uh, i did that show and uh, luckily the show went well and i realized 
realized suddenly people started respecting you more uh, the the moment you turn into an artist uh, i was the same person doing the same kind of work in advertising and i continued uh, advertising and my practice for few years but soon realized that it's very difficult to concentrate and on both so i gave up advertising totally and almost like uh, 96 97 onwards i've been just concentrating on my art and god has been kind to me and uh, everything fallen in its place and i started and enjoying art though it took long 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 time to you know to follow my or to get my right direction in art it took ages for me to for, discover myself as an artist but uh, i i guess that's like a learning curve for me when i was in advertising and later in publication and later i started as as a painter as well and uh, maybe uh, uh, advertising ta- taught a different thing altogether uh, to communicate uh, to a larger like how to communicate with masses in general but probably i, I couldn't able to finish my fine art course and that was a, a drawback in in a sense that you know, the, the conventional uh, way how to approach art uh, i i missed out on that on that so there were like pluses and minuses of what i had gone through but looking back probably i mean i would have done better if i had completed fine art but no regrets now <laughs> uh, and uh, well and then uh, as i went further uh, doing paintings for many years after doing paintings sculptures and installations i re- visited drawings in 2004 i love drawings as a medium because it gives me engage you know my line drawings are a mirror of overlapping overlapping thoughts and which eventually transcends into interesting forms i mean, I mean that about the drawings i will talk uh, later but uh, why i mentioned drawings because the last almost 10 years i've been working on only drawings so so the path which i wanted as an artist probably i got after a long long time mm-hmm. so uh, after almost 30 years of my art practice so i mean i mean i, I can go on talking about uh, so, no, the, uh, okay, so 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 so, so I, that's the whole idea <laughs> no like, i'll get i'll get back to uh, how it i mean uh, even when i was in final year of college i remember this is in 1989 i'm talking about we were celebrating 40 years of freedom and that year we were celebrating for our freedom and i said to my professor let me do a campaign based on this so he looked at me and said why you want to do something uh, which is socio political i said no sir you know, i mean i want to question the reality why why we have to be like this so i did a, this uh, this campaign based on the, the reality i went to delhi met some ministers and i never got the right answer to one back then <laughs> but but i did i mean in my own naive way that time as a student and he said you are not offering any solution i said sir but you know it is some crazy questions so there itself i got my first uh, like uh, the reality check if you are as an artist or as a, as an even uh, like a communication any field you have to provide solutions i said how can i provide solution in art so i said i can raise questions so that's how my art journey started and when i was doing illustrations as well i remember i used to get uh, tons of uh, like articles written by well known art uh, like writers uh, back in mumbai then and most of them had a similar story to tell about this urban living person and the stories were so interesting and and i had like limited time almost 3 3 to 4 hours every day so i, I had created 3 4 uh, protagonists like characters like most of them like uh, they never had like proper identity no features no visual recognition but yeah, uh, no mouth as such and and i felt my psyche somehow reflected in that character most of the people who could see uh, a lot of things but turn blind eye on most of the things happening around uh, they could speak but never said a word in public and those character when i saw, when i got the opportunity to paint i started painting those character through those character i developed my own uh, kind of a well, kind of a naive kind of a language as an artist without anything else with how can i just communicate with this person who is unrecognizable and that's how you know i started painting so i just i just uh, giving you all this brief because you know just small small things and also when i go back to this i i mentioned my humble background you know i, I there also i i saw the underbelly of bombay i said so many things which stayed with me and those those things one can't actually 
I wouldn't say repair, but you know, those precious memories plus the things we are, you personally have witnessed and so many things from riots to, I've seen people, I mean, in the name of religion got killed uh, in front of me. And from then, uh, um, because of this art, then you travel a lot, you see a different world. So fortunately, I've seen a lot in this, my small career. And all that has helped together uh, to form my own vocabulary and I, I, I still question our our existence. I still question lots of things happening around me. So so it all boils down right now. If you see my art is all about my surrounding and how I am questioning through my art. It's small small things which I see uh, that my preoccupation to document things, to see things differently, which probably are so mundane, so inconsequential to most of most of us. But I see those differently. So uh, in short, you know all. If I had to summarize it, everything together. So all these small, small things have made me, you know, not a better artist, but uh, made me a thinking artist right now, if, if I add that. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I think, so you're not, yes, of course you do it for commercial reasons as well, but you're also, this is your form of expression, right? Yes, and yes. I think you, what you're saying is that you look, very there's like awareness of what you see around you and you try and imbibe that not try but it comes naturally to you yes absolutely to imbibe that into your art so it's a form of expression right absolutely absolutely and as I, as I mentioned you know growing up in the dense and congested lanes and alleyways of South Mumbai in 1980s I have found a deep connection to the streets the objects the machines the animals and of course the social dramas that unfolded in on in those lanes that time and you know and other the the, the labyrinth, labyrinths of uh, my memory are inseparable from this labyrinth of the by lanes of old mumbai you know so it's it's so even if you see my work is so tedious so so intricate so uh, when i when i look back and i see you know so uh, i have to connect all this dot together Unless and I'm, I'm I'm saying all this because you, if you see my drawings right now, you know so uh, how uh, the present has been governed by my past, you know, and and how I'm twisting the present in the, the today's reality to create something poetic, you know that eventually is an art form. As I mentioned, the observation of mundane, especially you know this one singular emo emotion, which probably I can't articulate in words. I'm trying to capture you know in my photograph or the or the drawings or any other medium I'm trying right now. So mm -hmm. you're right, you know, it it's all boils down to uh, the, the reality right, which I'm in right now and also lots of memories which I've gone through. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so, you know, so that's what you, you mm -hmm. I mean, that's how you express yourself. I Absolutely. Mean, and, yeah, you don't, you know, as an artist, I guess, an, an artist of your, like you refer to yourself as a thinking artist, right? So yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. So I mean, I, I mean, that's that. I mean, I mean, I don't want to emphasize on that. It's just that, like, yeah. I, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no. I mean, the point that I'm trying to make is that. So, as a thinking artist, you yeah. you don't need to verbalize. You know, you the way you verbalize is through your work and Absolutely. through. Yeah, so, I mean, you're still verbalizing it, but you're expressing it and verbalizing it differently. So, you know, instead of speaking, you're speaking through your art. And that is quite, quite amazing. And, you know, um, um, I also, I mean, I've noticed that, you know, you, you were talking about your drawings and um, also your uh, earlier when you mentioned, you know, the nameless face or the yes. the, the face with no right. kind of, you know, just just the silhetto of a face and you right. kind of did all sorts of stuff with that. Right. Um, you picked objects from the streets and you, you know, some, mm, I mean, your art and all the sculpturing that you do is right. essentially you pick up stuff from whatever you find on the streets or right or in a mechanic shop or something like that so it's am i right is it like yeah, yeah, yeah and, and you're right absolutely you know as i mentioned earlier you know even even us growing up in those like this violins of chor bajar nal bajar ketwadi kamatipura kumarora you know uh, even as a kid i was intrigued by the design and uh, the, the the withered look and interesting objects and uh, uh, 
uh, and as I, as I started my art practice, I started collecting them. And there's a certain connect because of my childhood. And later, when I started using them, you know, uh, it's, it's my own way to actually elongate the life of that object. Otherwise, it's going to go to waste. So when I use it in an art form, somehow, uh, you know, I'm trying uh, to elongate the life of that object. And what, uh, when, and small, small thing. Right now, I did, I did a chair, uh, a makeshift uh, barber chair. You know, you see on most of these roadsides in Mumbai, there's so many makeshift bomb or the old found of barber chairs. And there's a, like a, a, a interesting story to each chair, if you see. You know, the, 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 the poor guy wants to build like a swanky salon and unfortunately can't afford it. The, the, this thing about to, to be larger than life, uh, his thing flex in the chair which he is operating on. So, you know, the small, small things like this intrigues me and, you know, uh, whenever I see them, I try to collect them and use them in my heart. You're listening to a fusion of stories recounted for the first time ever by some fascinating people from across the globe with me, Payo, on this very unique and special podcast series, Melting Pot. You also use a lot of digital, you know, uh, uh, forms of art as well, right? You, no, you no, 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 Every, no. Everything is hand done. I use a rotary. That's the thing that people get, things that I'm used. Everything is this rotary isograph pen, which is so fine. And everything is hand done. Uh, I, I've done digital, like uh, when I do installation and I mean, I had done installations earlier. That time I had done some digital work earlier. But last 10 years of my practice, nothing digital, no, nothing. So everything is... Absolutely. Um, everything is... Even, even recently I'm working on some stop uh, motion kind of animation. Even everything is uh, hand done and everything I shoot on, on my phone and there's less of technology. I like this rawness, uh, rawness and I like this... Uh, I'm, I'm slightly old school when it comes to... Uh, actually uh, presenting my art in, in a weird way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, yeah, it's your process, Sunil. So, I mean, it's not weird. And I mean, it's nothing's right or wrong and nothing's weird and, and yeah. not. It's, it's, yeah, I know, but you know, in an in, in art field, there are always someone will be judging you. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I used to get bothered about that aspect earlier a lot, but uh, now I just don't care, honestly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I think you're, What's important is that it comes from within and it's what you feel, right? And I think yeah. that's and and that's what you put. Yeah, across. yeah absolutely. Absolutely. So, right now yeah. it's more like a monologue, you know. I mean it's I it took like ages for me to create this distinctive imagery to develop through this, you know, drawings. And it's actually therapeutic uh, practice for me, you know, such multi-layered intimate drawings, they interplay between nature and urbanity, real and imaginary. There's so many things, cityscape, memorabilia, and as I mentioned, you know, suddenly this uh, urban reality were twisting into an abstract form. So one doesn't know what is real, what is old, what is new. So I'm, 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 I'm actually confusing people with with the, the way they see time, you know, there are lots of aspects. And and when I when you asked me about uh, my work earlier and why you are explaining uh, all this, so the reason I'm explaining because at one level it looks so simple, but uh, I mean people have can have their own interpretation of it. But there are so many layers attached to it, and on top of after all these layers, there are this uh, layer of this added layer of this object and uh, the, even the material, the found material, the pictures. And the pictures which I took, uh, I mean, which I generally take and use in my art. So it's slightly confusing. People don't, the audience generally don't know what is real, what is uh, what is made now, what is is uh, what what actually is found, and. Uh, and not just that, even the even the photographs from the old frames, the back of it, I've done drawing on drawing on it, and on that on also the found of family photos, photos. You know, there's the history attached to it. So I, I, and so there are multiple layers to my work. And when I actually sit down with this, so many like thoughts going on in my head of my observation of today's reality. And I, when I sit and draw, the line creates its own form, and it actually dictating or taking me somewhere else than what I had thought of. So eventually the thing which I'm creating is, though it's coming from the reality, but it's a kind of a fiction in a way. So it's very difficult to explain my work in words actually. So you basically let 
you know, your uh, audience decide for themselves. Absolutely. As, uh, yeah, it, your reality and the way they interpret your reality could be completely different. Yeah. Absolutely, so. and I believe in that kind of art, you know, where where you, which is where the art is open, you know, if, if it's art is restricted to one direction, then in my book, that's not like a really good art. You know, if, if one go, if you understand everything, then that's not a good art, I guess. <laughs> Mm, correct. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, you know, I mean, people talk about uh, he's a contemporary artist or he's a in, you know, he's Indian art or abstract art or mm -hmm. modern art or, you know, they're different. Uh, like, yeah, it, yeah, that's it, labeling, basically. Yes, yeah, it's labeling. Correct. So yeah. do you feel like you're labeled by you know, the people who appreciate your art, do you feel like you're labeled by them? And do you agree? Or... No, no, I'll be honest with you. I mean, as I, as I, as I honestly said earlier, when I started off, because, because of the scenario which I've been put in, I had no choice to, but to continue in advertising. And, and I had a, a different kind of way to approach art. Probably that time people labeled me a bit. I, and that's also my doing. I mean, I, I'm not like really blaming anyone. But as uh, as years pass by, as an as I, I probably am evolved as an artist, I think they can't label me anymore because I I, I tried so many different things. So I, I tried all the med mediums approaches in art, and finally, I think. Uh, I personally feel that and I, uh, right now I'm on the right path, though I still have a lot to explore, a lot to, uh, to achieve in the path I have chosen. But right now it's difficult for anyone to label me. Yeah, probably they done that earlier when I was young as an artist. Yeah, I can say that. Do you have like a, I'm sure you have a global exposure as well, right, as an artist? Yeah, luckily, yes. Now, like last 10 years, yes. I mean, I've done shows earlier as well. I've done lots of shows uh, internationally. But uh, luckily, right now, with my gallery and gallery ski, I mean, the, the, way, the way I'm approaching art is totally different than what I was doing earlier. So, yes, the, the exposure I'm getting right now is totally different from what I got earlier. Yeah, that's true. Okay, that's that's interesting. So, out of outside of India, which yeah. countries do you think you've had the maximum? You know, people have kind of understood and uh, appreciated your art. I mean, in India, everybody knows Sunil yeah. Patel, right? So, yeah. I mean, luckily, you know, I had uh, like opportunity to show in Hong Kong thrice, uh, uh, but that with my earlier kind of. Uh, uh, Art practice, and I've been received well in Hong Kong, and and I I done a show uh, with uh, drawings and uh, paintings uh, like amalgamation of both. Even that has been received well in Amsterdam. But uh, if you see recently in Europe, especially Basel, and uh, what I'm doing right now with this this drawings and uh, the drawings on the on top of photos which I take. I've been received really well in Europe. I mean, I've been, I'm, a, I'm really glad about that uh, that aspect of it. Yeah, because I feel that your art, I mean, I've, I've had a glimpse of, you know, some of your, um, what you've done in terms of drawing over photos and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I feel that it's very, it's not a typical kind of art and so and so I can understand why you know you are being appreciated in Europe yeah I mean it's it's not you know because like Indian art has a certain yeah I know what you're saying yes yeah you know it's very like okay you're either either painting Ganesha's or I, I mean there's nothing <laughs> yeah, but luckily luckily that that has changed a lot if you say in the last 20 years you know that that has changed a lot and there are lots of conceptual Indian artists who are doing exceptionally well probably the th the problem is you know they they not have been um, as uh, well known in India as they are abroad, you know that's the catch, you know, uh -huh. unfortunately, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I guess. but that, but that's that's the reality. But that's okay, I guess, you know. Yeah. With an artist, you can't really say what next. You know, like you can say that to an author. Say, okay, what's your next book? I mean, with an artist, you can't really, you can't really <laughs> do that, right? But clearly, your 
still evolving, still discovering, still creating, you know, which is which is so incredible. So so tell me, what is your process in, in the sense that do you, you know, dedicate a few hours in a day to create, to work in your studio or whenever you get an idea, uh, you pick it up and then you kind of follow it with a series? How, what is your process? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that in like uh, two parts. If you ask me what next, so right now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm enjoying this new like uh, medium. I mean, new for me, uh, the 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 videos and animation, and so I'm 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 rediscovering myself in that. So let's see how, where it takes me. And uh, and about the other question, see, as an artist, we are on twenty four seven. There's no no like uh, while I'm reading book, while I'm listening to Indian classical music, while watching a some sci-fi series on Netflix to like you know I'm mingling with people uh, you know this uh, conversation over beer of this uh, political reality right now so uh, as an artist I'm on 24 7 and I, I, I mean you never know where it can click and you get the next idea so it, it's, it's really difficult yeah but once you get uh, a certain idea to expand that into a series or uh, so it takes uh, sometimes um, you can't like predict that because to find ideas can be easy but to convert that into uh, like an interesting art form can be difficult at times and i mean i just i, I know i'm i've done different forms of like the, the themes the, I thought the myopia I remember was about the myopic vision of our society and most of the works were based on or related to the same subject. I remember the NUM, the exhibition, uh, and it was about my state of mind during that time. And after that, the first exhibition of drawings, the soliloquies, notes from the drawing book, was kind of a monologue. It was more personal in nature. So, uh, I mean, th th they're like, uh, it all depends on what crossroads of life you are at that point. And uh, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, the more you evolve as an artist, you start looking at things differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I don't ask the same questions that I asked earlier in my art practice. I, I, I'm on a different kind of zone. I'm, I'm more subtle in my approach. You know, I'm, I don't, uh, earlier I used to, oh, I mean, the work was slightly louder. Right, right now, it's much more subtle. So that's a major difference in the art practice. And but, but it's very difficult to predict, predict uh, where the inspiration comes from. But fortunately, I'm in a city where I mean, Mumbai is one city where you get everything on platter. I mean, it's. Uh, so that's like the biggest inspiration I, I, and luckily you, you know you know about Mumbai and you know, even if you take a ride uh, in, a, in a local train or you go in a bus somewhere I mean it's, it's not like a boring journey you'll always find something interesting so, so yeah. that's that's the, the high the city gives you and that that high also reflects in my work yeah i get that because yeah. the city is just so vibrant it's full of people there's always so much going on Absolutely. and you, know, you would about the by lanes and you you know yeah, all of absolutely. that it's like, yes. yeah as a stimulus for you absolutely um, yeah it's not, nothing a nothing can beat that you know i mean i mean luckily i mean you also have traveled enough but you know something about mumbai as a city i mean it has got its uh, pluses and minuses as major drawbacks and all that but saying all that the character and the the vibrancy the the the, the people it makes such a, like interesting uh, it's like an art in motion all the time 24/7 <laughs> 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 very well put and i think <laughs> nothing can be said after that <laughs> <laughs> no but uh, you have to witness it yourself and i add, add vada pav to that I add local food to that i add local flavors and I, I, and the filth and then dirty smells and you have a lovely pot puri of of uh, of uh, uh, like a fiction which uh, you don't know who's the hero, hero and who's the villain. <laughs> <laughs> you you just kind of, uh, one, go with the flow to absorb it. Either you love it or you hate it, but, you know. Um, yeah, but you you will never, you, you can't ignore it, you know, that, that's yeah. the thing. <laughs> and and it, it. The, your good or bad experience that those will teach you a lot and it they will stay with you. And I know lots of artists from Mumbai, you know, the, the way 
I mean, that they see or they produce art, and somehow, you know, they whatever they do, do, but they come back to their roots, uh, and that's uh, Mumbai or Bombay, you know, uh, Bombay was earlier uh, because I, I always say it Bombay and Mumbai because I have different memories of Bombay and a different memories of Mumbai. Oh <laughs> <laughs> no, because you know, for me, it's like I could never understood that uh, the the equestrian statue of King Edward when they moved and they uh, took it inside. And it's not easy to erase our colonial past in like one action. I mean, um, we, we've been brought up like that with, I mean, whatever said and done, you know, someone had ruled our country. And it's not easy to erase that past. Uh, I don't know, that's the way I look at things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that could be a whole new, new, <laughs> new <laughs> episode. <laughs> so. yeah. Thank you so much, Sunil. I mean, I've really enjoyed my conversation with you and I'm sure the listeners will no, also. I, I, Pyle, I must admit, I'm not really good at all this. But, you know, with you, uh, I've been, I, I, since I've known you for many years and I know the way you see art, way, the way you understand art, probably I, I was more open to you. <laughs> you know, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. <laughs> thank you. And I hope I made you comfortable. <laughs> because... <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Before we started the conversation, you were, you know, you said, oh, I'm... Mm, yeah, I because I know I'm generally not very fluent. I mean, I'm still not fluent, but you know... <laughs> no, but you, you've just flowed. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'm sure my listeners would absolutely enjoy this, this conversation. I so. hope so. I hope so. And <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, Sunil. Thanks. Sunil, don't you think is so honest about himself? and the way he talks with such ease about his humble upbringing. What inspires him as an artist, how he has evolved over the years in his creativity using different medium, experimenting, not trying to conform. To me, he spoke straight from the heart. I think it's the sign of a true artist. Anyways, I'm a big fan of his works as I already mentioned at the start of the conversation. So it was so amazing listening to him talk about his journey. Also, the love that he has for the city of Mumbai in India is just so palpable. And the way he describes it, you almost imagine that you are there. <laughs> and he also describes the streets of Mumbai, the people, talks about the city that never sleeps and where and how the people are so resilient. All of it is so true. And if you've had any links with that city, you would completely get that. For more such wonderful stories of very inspiring people, do continue to listen to Melting.